Okay. So what I'll be showing you today is a uh, brief demonstration of how UCAR is used, how to get it set up, uh, and some of the reporting features that you have access to. So if at any point anyone has any questions, just feel free to interrupt me. Be happy to talk through them with you. Um, I've also got a very helpful PDF walkthrough that's got pictures and uh, just basically it just walks you through this entire process in a PDF form. So don't feel like you have to memorize everything. Uh, and we will have this as a recording and we will have some information that we can pass out to you shortly after. Um, but basically whenever you log in, um, this is what it's going to look like. I'm actually logged into Gary's account as you can see here in the top right hand corner. And it does look like there is some feedback. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to try to mute everyone but myself and see if I can get it fixed that way. And then if anybody has any questions, just feel free to type in the chat box. Um, okay, perfect. So um, as you noticed, I'm actually logged into Gary's account. So this is what you're going to see uh, whenever you log into your ProctorU account. If you don't currently have a ProctorU account, you can just reach out to us after the call and we'll get you set up. Um, but what we're looking for here is on the left-hand side where it says UCARD. I'm just going to click on that. It's going to take me to a UCARD dashboard. So as you can see, it's uh, it's pretty empty right now. We just set you guys up for UCARD, and this will be the first time that anyone's using it. So that's why you see uh, not a whole lot of information here, but we're going to add one of those today um, just for demonstration purposes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to the top right-hand corner and go to UCARD options and select new UCARD challenge. Um, for those of you, I guess just a little bit of background as uh, what UCARD does, it's keystroke biometrics used to authenticate the student. Uh, so instead of the authentication quiz, which is a standard, uh, we're using a, another form or another layer of authentication to verify that that's the correct student working remotely from us. Um, so everything that you're going to fill out here are the pieces of information that are needed to create a UCARD challenge in our system. So I will walk you through those here. Um, the challenge title, uh, really you're just naming whatever you want to call this UCARD. So maybe this UCARD challenge relates to a math exam. So I'm going to call it the UCARD uh, for Math 101, Section 003, whatever you want to call it. I'm just using this as a general example. Uh, the department is just like when you create an exam in our system, you're going to have this coincide with a certain department. So we're just going to do, uh, we'll do Gary's test for that. Uh, just like you're filling out on the exam, you're going to fill out a term. So let's say that this authentication is for the summer of 2016. And the instructor, I'll play the instructor for this one. Uh, if you ever want to be notified when somebody is actually scheduling a UCARD appointment with us, uh, you can do that. Uh, with your account, though, you're going to be able to log in at any given time and actually see who has scheduled or who has not scheduled their UCARD. Uh, what this essentially does is it gives you a push notification saying that somebody is scheduled. Um, I would just caution you if you decide to use this field and put an email address here. Uh, if you only have one or two students taking a UCARD, challenge with us, you're only going to get one or two emails, but if you have, you know, 50 or 60 students, you're going to be inundated with emails. So um, just know that the, I guess the way that we counteract that is giving you access to that information anytime you log in. Uh, we have a contact info for, for UCARD issues um, if somebody's having any trouble and there's something, there's nothing that we can do on our end to resolve the situation. So. Um, Maybe they're trying to do their initial UCARD setup and they just, they're just having difficulties and we need to reach out to somebody. Again, we're only going to reach out if it's something that we can't help correct with the student. Um, you could list your contact information here, so a name, uh, an email address, and a phone number. Uh, and since we are 24-7, we never want to disturb you outside of, um, outside of hours where we don't need to call you. So uh, avoiding those 3 a.m. calls when a student schedules a session, you can just let us know uh, what's a good time to contact you via phone. And if it's outside of those hours, we'll just give you contact via email. Um, the keystroke sample. Uh, what we've seen here in terms of standards and best practices for what the students are actually typing as the keystroke sample. We've seen a lot of institutions here using UCARD right now adopt the, uh, the universities or the college's uh, code of conduct um, shortened into a 140 character statement. So um, you know, 
as a student at Roger State, I promise to uphold academic integrity. Whatever your honor code is, you can put that here, and it kind of adds in a layer of um, not necessarily security. Security is the wrong word, but it, but it adds a factor into play where they're having to type their honor code before they actually type, uh, take an exam with us, which kind of adds some severity in, or, or gravity to the situation, making sure that they understand full well if they do try to breach academic integrity. Um, we just gave them that friendly reminder that your the, the honor code is at stake, and you actually just type that in before the exam. So, um, perfect. Yeah, thank you, Gary. Uh, the last piece of information that we're looking for here is the UCARD window. Um, all that really means is what's the window of time that we're going to allow them to schedule this in our system. Uh, so we'll just use the, uh, the pre-updated information here as an example. Uh, with this window in place, they would be able to schedule an appointment anytime between June 16th at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. It's going to be unique to your account. Um, between June 23rd at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. So any appointment within that window, they're going to be able to schedule for. They're going to have... Uh, many different appointments to choose from. We break our appointments into five-minute increments. So there's literally hundreds of appointments that they can choose from in that seven-day span. Um, if they try to schedule for June 15th or June 24th, which are clearly outside of those dates, they won't be able to in our system um, just because we want to absolutely restrict any kind of window that you guys are trying to hold uh, on your end. So assuming that I've actually filled out all this information, um, that's everything that I need to actually create the the initial U card. Um, so I'm not actually going to add a fake one because I don't want that floating around your system. Um, but once you add that to the system, it's going to return you to the dashboard page. Again, all I'm doing to get to the U card portion is clicking the U card subsection on the left hand side, and it's going to show you that you've got a U card creation and a challenge waiting. Um, so before I go to um, showing you how to add that to previous exams or anything like that. Does anybody have any questions about what UCARD does and what are some of the features go into creating that in our system? Okay, perfect. Good morning. Hey. Good morning. Hi, everyone. I, I just want to add that um, the creating a UCARD page, when you create a UCARD challenge, it essentially creates a link um, that link is what you would be using to add into your assessments or assignments, um, whatever you're thinking of putting in. Um, the link actually gets formed after you submit that form. Um, and the exam window is really just going to indicate when that link is still live, so it's still active. Click and actually read somewhere. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah, and and that's one of the things that unfortunately, since we don't have one created, Gary, if you want to um, create one with me, we can do that. So I can actually show you the link. But one of the things I was going to point out here, um, and it may be kind of small, so let's zoom in just a bit. So when you do create a U card, uh, you're going to have two options here on the right hand side. There's going to be this little, looks like kind of a little. Uh, chain link fence. <laughs> All that is is a, uh, a link that's going to be generated. Um, I kind of referenced earlier that there's two ways and there's two major features for how this has been adopted at the institutional level. Um, one, where they just actually take the U card with their proctor in which you're not going to have to worry about uh, using this link for anything. Um, but the second form, and Tommy touched on this earlier as well, is that people are embedding this link into actual homework assignments, quizzes, whatever it may be, unproctored sessions, basically. Uh, and so when you do create a UCARD, it's going to generate an actual link that you can click on here. And hopefully um, you can see where I'm waving my mouse right here. Uh, as soon as that generates, that's what you're going to actually copy and paste and put it on your side of the learning management system. Okay. All right, and so from a student perspective, I kind of wanted to show you that to see exactly what they're going to do. I've actually registered myself as a student at Roger State temporarily just to be able to show you this. So I'm going to log out here and then log in as a student. So now once UCARD is Establish, or, or I'm sorry, once it's activated at the institutional level, they're going to have this option here in the top left-hand corner. 
which is create uCard. Um, this is the first thing that they're going to do to actually um, enable the uCard in our system from the standpoint of we're, we're authenticating them and watching them set up their uCard initially. So all they'll have to do before they actually schedule for an exam is click on the create uCard uh, button. It's going to bring up this right here. It says you must verify your identity with ProctorU before taking any uCard authentication challenges. Would you like to schedule your uCard create session now? Um, they'll just click schedule session. And it brings up the same scheduling interface that they use to currently schedule exams now. So it's it's nothing foreign to the student if they've used ProctorU before. This is the same process that they're doing to actually schedule exams currently. So um, we, it's it's been great in the sense that students really don't have difficulty figuring out what they need to do. Um, it's it's as long as they're clicking the button and scheduling the U card, um, they'll be able to do that uh, for their next exam. Uh, if they forget to schedule their U card and they do schedule an exam that has U card the keystroke biometrics enabled, what it'll do is it will essentially add that U card setup process to that exam um, to that exam appointment where at the very front end of the exam when we would just normally authenticate them with challenge questions like we did in the past. Now what will happen is they're taking that keystroke biometrics and during a proctored session uh, instead of having to uh, schedule one individual UCARD and one individual exam session, we combine the two. Uh, it saves them a little bit of money and it also uh, you know, knocks out two birds with one stone. So do you have any question about how that works and anything that the student needs to be prepared for when they do their UCARD with us? Okay, perfect. Yes, so Kevin, you know, you're exactly right. They would just pick one of the times. As you've noticed here, um, they can basically pick a date. So they select the date in a calendar format. Maybe they want to do it a couple months in advance. They can do that. Um, so let's just show you what it would look like. Let's say I just want to schedule it tomorrow. So I'm going to click June 17th. And I'm going to select a range of time. Let's say I want to take it around 5 o'clock p.m. tomorrow. I'm going to hit Find Available Times. Okay, and so what it's going to do is going to give me, it's not going to give me every time in the system so that they're not seeing hundreds of different appointments at one time. It's going to give me the best appointments that we have available around the 5 p.m. tomorrow uh, and this is in mountain time because that's what time zone my account's in. It'll automatically update if they're in central. Um, so I can select whichever time I would like to. Click select. Click schedule. And it'll ask them to confirm the session. So for the UCAR creation, uh, currently that's just uh, $5 for them to set that up initially. Um, so do you have any questions about that? I won't actually check that out because I'm not actually going to take the U card with you guys, but um, that's what they would see from their standpoint. No problem. You're welcome. Okay, so um, that's pretty much everything that I was going to show you. There are a few pieces that you won't be able to see until you've actually got data in the system. So I'm going to pull up our PDF to be able to reference some points here as well. Um, one of the things I wanted to show you was the, some of the UCARD reporting. So let me zoom in a little bit here. Uh, as you can see, one of our colleagues was, uh, was nice enough to let us take a picture of her and show you what that's going to look like when you actually go into the reporting section. So you can see for Elena, uh, it shows her initial UCARD sample. Uh, and it shows all the pieces of information about that. It says what type of verification she did, uh, keystroke, uh, whether it was challenge questions. The very first one's going to be challenge questions so that we can establish a keystroke uh, rhythm for the student. Um, it'll show you how many attempts they did. So on the right hand side, I'm not sure if, if that's big enough or not. Let me make that a little bit bigger. You can see how many attempts the user had. So uh, when you do set up the UCAR, one of the things that you saw was how many attempts do they get at the UCAR. So you can set that as one. You can set it as two. Really, we don't. For our partners, we've only seen one or two chances. Nothing really uh, exceeds the the two that we've seen so far. Um, and then you can also see a score for the actual keystroke. So uh, on the bottom, when it looks like she actually did her keystroke for her midterm on June 26th. 
uh, it showed that she got a 99% pass rate for her UCARD uh, when we used to compare that to the initial one she created. So that's really what the uh, reporting will look like to when, once you actually start establishing this with your students. Okay. So Gary, that's that's really what I was going to show from, from our end and from our perspective. Um, again, if you have questions going down the road, we'd be more than happy to meet with you or talk you through anything. But that's that's really what you're going to do um, with UCARD as it stands today. And then as it builds out in the future, maybe we add some new features, but this is how it kind of stands today. So does anybody have any questions whatsoever, or I'm sorry, whatsoever about uh, anything UCARD related? Marty, is there a way that you could actually demonstrate how that keystroke analysis actually looks live when a student is performing a keystroke analysis? Tommy was able to do that at